okay you guys okay this is part two i'm not gonna um really do any recaps from part one you guys but this is part two so we're just gonna continue on with gideon and moses um we're not gonna really read too much from them because like i said we have videos on them it's um series and bible studies and things so you know so let's get into gideon he is found in um judges chapter six the Israelites are oppressed by Midian. Gideon is chosen to deliver Israel from Midian in chapter 6. Uh, also talks about Gideon's army in chapter 7. God reduces Gideon's army to 300 men. The Lord calls upon Gideon to attack the Midianites also in chapter 7. And Gideon's unusual battle plan delivers Israel from the Midianites. But in chapter 8, Gideon pacifies the Ephraimites. Um, he avenges his brother's deaths by killing two Midianite kings and he makes a gold idol. And that, you know, Israel returns to idolatry and like that gold idol in the end, it had proved to be like a snare to him in his house. So some of the notes, just a few of them, guys, um, that I have for him. Um, he's called Jerubabel. If you go back in um, Judges chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Then Jerubabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the wall of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley and it just kind of like goes down and tell you that um basically um there was this angel that had appeared to him in six you guys and said the lord is with thee thy mighty man of valor he did not feel confident really he was like you know um basically like how i'm gonna save israel my family is poor i'm the least in my father's house and the lord was just like i'm sending him like the word like God is going to be with you. You're going to smite the Midianites as one man. Like God is going to basically give him victory. He's the one chosen to deliver um, Israel from, from Midian. You know, so he was chosen by God to deliver Israel from Midianite and the Midianite depression. Because like I said, we did a series on this. So what was happening is um, the Lord has set up judges for the people of Israel. And it'll be times where they'll be doing good. Like the people will be doing real good and everything will be peaceful in the land. And then there'll be times where they go back to the, the adultery um, the adultery and just not serving the Lord and displeasing to him and the Lord would cause them to be oppressed by the enemies and this was a pattern it was a cycle they'll do good then they'll fall off then they'll do good and they'll fall off so it was this cycle so now it's getting back to the point where um, it's not so good because in Judges 5 with the song of Deborah and Barak um, they had land the land had rest for 40 years then they did evil back in 6 they did evil inside of the Lord the Lord delivered them to the hands of Midian for seven years. Like, um, it just was not looking good for them. So basically, anyway, the Lord had chose him to deliver them from this oppression. Um, his confidence built as he obeyed the Lord. You know, he had a heart to follow God and the ear to respond to God's commandments and strategies. And there was times where he was like, well, basically like, okay, if this is you, then do it this way. Like, okay, command the ground to be this or command the dew or the fleece or something like that to be like this. And the Lord would do it. And I want to encourage someone on here that may not be fully confident. That doesn't mean that you're disqualified as a leader. God still chose you. He don't see you just solely for where you are. He see you for where you're going. He see you for his plans and purposes um, for your life. And he knows that he will build that self-esteem up. He know he will build that confidence up. But he would just, um, you know, appreciate if you would obey the commands whether you understand it or not he just wants the obedience everything else will grow the, the obedience will grow he want to see if you're going to trust him and obey so it's important that you trust the lord and allow him to build your confidence you know and have a heart to follow the lord and the ear to respond to god's commandments and strategies you know because god sees and knows all god sees things more than what we see and know so it's important to uh you know to take heed to that um, in the middle of oppression, God delivered him and had helped him to deliver others. You could be in the middle of dealing with a trial or storm and, or going through something in the Lord as he's delivering you and promising you victory and delivering you through it and will deliver you through it. He will cause you to go back and help someone else and to, live, and to deliver others and help someone else. So don't ever feel disqualified like um, I'm not worthy because I'm going through this situation or I'm in the midst of something also. God will use that as good ground. He will use that as training ground. He will use that to deliver you and to help you deliver others. Okay. Um, in six, he tore down his father's altar to Baal. He tore down his father's altar to Baal. It was a situation like where the next morning they was like, bring him out and things like that. Um, cause they felt some type of way. 
but his dad i believe was like if bell is really a god let him defend himself and then that's why they call him like jeruba bell so it had to start in his house he did it by night i believe because he was like afraid of the people and everything but he still obeyed and sometimes when god is calling you to be his leader um and to be his servant he gonna deal with things in the heart. He gonna deal with things in your family line. He gonna deal with things in your bloodline. He gonna deal with things in your house. Whether that house is your heart or your family, he gonna start at home first so that you're able to effectively lead others. Because if, if, it's, if it's trash at home, how is you gonna effectively lead someone else? That's like being a hypocrite, you know? So God will cause it to begin at home. It don't mean it have to be perfect or it's fully there, but he'll start it at home. You know, and it wasn't saying that Gideon was um, serving Baal. His father had set up this. So this is dealing with, it could have been because of what his father was doing that it also was kind of making it worse for his family or family line, but God still called him. God can still call you out. This is a word for somebody. God can still cause you to be the one to break the curse. God can still cause you to be the one to do it. Okay? Um, so he tore down his father's altar to Baal. And basically, if you go, if you go in um, seven, God reduces his army to 300 men. It started with this big number and the Lord reduced it because God wants to get the glory. God don't want no one saying um, that they did it because of them. So sometimes even in leadership or ministry in different areas, you know, it's going to be seasons where some people with you, like we talked about before plenty of times, and guys, I'm going to um, not be before you guys long because I have to get off soon. I'm not trying to rush, but... Um, there's going to be times where it's going to be reduced sometimes. And sometimes it may look like, whoa, it looks like this is working against me, but really it's working for you because God wants to get the glory and God wants to clean house. And like we talked about years before, some people are just maybe meant for your level one. They may not be meant for your level two or three, but it's all to help you advance and go to your next level. And you learn and do and glean what you can from on those levels because God will send what and who you need along the way. Sometimes he sent it before you and he, he just want to see if you're going to be obedient and follow. Sometimes he'll send it little bit by little bit and you just got to obey and take them steps. Sometimes he's going to send it or he'll send you first and then send it, but he's going to always release it in time. He's going to send what and who you need along the way. Okay. So, um, he won with what seemed like a few people because it's, you talking about 300 people going against these people so many more people it's like if you look at naturally they were outnumbered but greater it was greater for them than against them and i'm reminded of um the prophet elijah with the chariots and the horses when i believe the armenian army had came against them and the servant was like freaking out and he was like lord open his eyes and he opened his eyes and he saw them um i believe those angels and those chariots and horses of fire all around them and it was really literally greater for them in the spirit than the natural and this spiritual realm it's more ruler than this this natural realm you guys it always starts in birth in the spirit realm first then it manifests in this natural realm so god had already gave him victory before he even went out with this so that's the word like when god gives you a word it's already done in the spirit realm you just have to be in agreement and obey because god's word is going to come to pass so he seen he won what seemed like a few people you know and when god has graced you it doesn't matter the numbers. It doesn't matter if it's many or few. Y'all, please don't get in an accident at the library. It, it doesn't matter the numbers if it's many or few. God will get the victory. You know? So, um, before we go into Moses and I close, in the end, though, you know, in Judges 8, he pacified the Ephraimites. He did avenge his brother's death by killing two Midianite kings, and he made a gold idol like an ephod. If you read verses 22 through 28 of Judges um, chapter 8, and it became a snare to him in his house. And, you know, at this point, the Lord had downloaded for me to write, it is important to maintain your stance and deliverance in the Lord. Because if you read 29 through 35, Israel returns to idolatry. You know, and... But um, he did. But he did die in his good old age, and he was buried in the um, sepulcher of Joash, his father, and Ophrah of the Abarites. You know, and basically, guys, when he died, the children of Israel they went back to whoring after Balaam. 
and they made like this other bell type of God their God and they didn't remember the Lord and like I said it was a cycle they be doing good and they fall off so that's it that I wrote for him now we're going to talk about um, Moses hi we're going to talk about Moses um, and we're going to close with this um, Moses you guys he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter in Pharaoh's house um, what was trying to kill him end up having to let him live and that goes to show you when God has a plan for your life it doesn't matter because like in Exodus you guys um, we do have an Exodus series but in Exodus the Israelites increased there was a new king who didn't know Joseph he arose and the midwife said the male children and they were like telling him like kill him off and Moses is basically born in chapter 2 you know so the Lord had a purpose for him and I want to say that for someone against all odds God has a purpose for you you know, it doesn't matter your mistakes, your pain from your adolescence or being an adult or your childhood or what the enemy trying to do with you as, was a child. When God has a plan and purpose for your life, period. You have a plan and purpose for your life, period. You know, because he was born in um, chapter two and he was found and brought up by Pharaoh's daughter because basically um, his mother, she saw that he was a godly child at a very young age. And she made like this basket. She made it of... Um, she made it a, like slime and pitch and um like she made him this ark like this this thing he could float like in the water basically and she made it and she put him in there and that has to be faith because you know you see death around you that you hearing mamas losing their babies you know and it's like you can't you you hiding yours the best you can but it's like at any time this could kind of go left but you know that be faith to let go of a baby that you didn't birth and push out of your own womb to, to really entrust the Lord with this baby and put him on the river where animals and different things live up and creatures live up in that river. That's faith to be able to release your promise. And the Lord is saying that for somebody. It could be promises that you believe in God for. And like when you release your faith in the midst of the pain and the midst of what's going on and you believe God to preserve that promise, the Lord will not fail you. He will not fail you so you know, his uh, brother's Aaron, right, with the, dealing with the Levitical priesthood, Aaron, and his sister is Miriam, the prophetess. I believe she was a, a prophetess as well. It's not before me right now, but, yeah, that was his mom. I believe his mom's name was Jacobet or Jacobet, if I'm saying that correctly, if I'm wrong, um, someone correct me in the comment section. Um, and basically, like, when he was going on this bank, his sister had stood there and watched, and then she went and offered to Pharaoh's daughter. She was like, um... You know, she got a, a, a Hebrew woman that can nurse the child. So basically his mom got paid to t <laughs> his mom got paid to take care of him. She was compensated for taking care of her own child. But they unbeknownst to Pharaoh them, they didn't know his daughter. But he was raised up in that house. She schooled like his mom taught him and she nursed him and things. But when he became like of a certain age, she had to release him back because Pharaoh's daughter pretty much raised him like her baby, like like her son. You know, you know. And then um, in two, he kills an Egyptian and God hears the complaints of the Israelites and basically he had fled. He had fled after this. Um, he was married, his wife was Zipporah. Um, he had two kids, he had Gershom and he had somebody, um, another one, I forgot the other one name, but he kept his father's flock. Jethro, the Lord appeared to him in the burning bush and things and it continues on, um, you know, and yeah, Jethro was his father-in-law, Zipporah was his wife. Um, he did have a little temper too, you guys. But he was human, you know, when you talk about the Ten Commandments, that's dealing with him. Um, going back like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you know, you will see that there as well. But let me just give you guys quickly this, what's, what happened in Exodus, and I think we're going to close with this. Um, Moses is born, right, and two, his, his, he's found and brought up by Pharaoh's daughter. He kills an Egyptian. Three, Je um, also... God hears the complaints of the Israelites in 2, 3. Je Moses keeps Jethro's flocks. 4, Moses' rod and turned into a serpent as a sign. Moses' brother Aaron joins him. Um, and his brother and sister did put their mouth on him, but the Lord had dealt with them as well. And there were other people that rose up against him, um, you know, but the Lord dealt with them people as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, so he departs from Jethro in 4. Zipporah circumcises her son in five. Pharaoh chides Moses and Aaron for their message. Pharaoh opposes their complaints. Six, God renews his promise by his name Jehovah. There's the geology of um, the genealogy of Reuben. 
Seven, Moses is encouraged to go to Pharaoh. Eight, Moses is, I mean, seven, Moses' riders turned into a serpent. The plague of water turned to blood. Um, eight is the plague of frogs. The plague of lice, the plague of swarms and flies that cover the land. Nine is the plague of death on the beast. The plague of boils and blisters. And all this was prophetic happening to Egypt because God was just letting them know he got over all these things. Like they had all these different false um, gods and these different things. They believed different things and just a lot of stuff was going on. And um, Moses warns about the coming hell, um, like hell that was going to come from the sky, basically. The, the plague of boils and blisters. Yeah, the plague of hell. Um, God threatens to send locusts in 10, the plague of locusts, the plague of darkness. 11 is God's message to the Israelites. Moses threatens Pharaoh with the death of the firstborn. 12 is the beginning of the year's change and the Passover is instituted. Um, the firstborn, are they are literally slain in that chapter 2. There's the ordinance of the Passover. 13, the firstborn are sanctified to God. The Israelites go out of Egypt and carry Joseph's bones with them. And also the firstborn of beasts are set apart in 13. and 14, God instructs the Israelites in their journey. The Israelites murmur. God instructs Moses. The Israelites pass through the Red Sea. And that is prophetic for somebody. Please read Exodus 14, verses 21 through 31 in the name of Jesus. Um, they did murmur in 14 also. And he instructed Moses, the Lord did. 15 is Moses' song. The people want water, but the waters at Mara are bitter. Like they were very ungrateful to this man. A lot, not all of them, but a lot. They complained against him. You know, it was a lot on him. And his father-in-law had came and gave him the game, like he gave him wisdom. He was like, what you doing with these people is not wise because it was so many people coming to him for big and small problems. He was like, you need to basically just um, paraphrase. And he was like, you need to um, set up leaders and set up people that can handle certain things that can handle a certain amount of people. And that's the thing about leadership too. You don't want to be burnt out because if you're not good for you, how can you be good for somebody else? You want to be good, all areas, like God was telling us um, in other videos, but especially this month with the health, how we need to be healthy. He wants us healthy in all areas of our life. God needs us here for his kingdom, to do his kingdom work and will. And, you know, with leadership, burnout can come. With leadership, people can get weary. With leadership, people can feel like they're not um, appreciated and they're taking advantage of and they just want to give up or say, you know, I put in my time, I'm ready to clock out. But God is not saying that. If it's not your time to retire or clock out, you got to get refreshed. You got to know when to go take a vacation, when to say no, when to set boundaries for people. You have to know when, how to cope and how to do things and deal with things effectively and be healthy in all areas of your life, especially mentally, physically, and spiritually and emotionally. You got to know how to set boundaries in your relationship. You know, because it came a time where the Lord had told him, I believe the Lord told him, speak to the rock. He was so very frustrated that I think he struck the rock or something and the water came out and that caused him not to enter to the promised land. The Lord told him, he said, you know, you're not going to be able to go in to the promised land, you know, and after a while, things can get to you when you're good to people and you're doing your best and people just, you're great, you're fickle. You, you're here one day, you're not here the next day. You know, you, you're good one day, you, you're off the next day and that can get to a person's mind and leadership but that's why you got to be rooted and grounded in the lord make sure you make time for yourself it is not selfish as a leader to make time for you because if you constantly pouring out pouring out pouring out pouring out you're going to become dehydrated and, and who's there to help you and we have videos talking about that you got to make sure you're being restored and poured back into it it's not selfish that is wisdom that is wisdom to do that so moses song at 15 the people want water, but the waters at Mara are bitter. Uh, 16, God sends quail and manna. 17, the people murmur for water at Rephidim, and uh, Amalek is conquered. 18, Jethro brings to Moses his wife and two kids, and Moses entertains Jethro, and that's when he was telling him, you know, like, um, the different things. And then Moses judges the people. 19, the people come to Sinai. The all-inspiring presence of God on Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments in 20, right? The people are afraid and stand far away also with them Ten Commandments in 20. In 21, there's laws for servants. There's laws about those hurt accidentally. There's laws about theft. There's laws about fornication. There's laws about usury. Uh, 23, there's laws about slander and false witness. There's laws about rest for land and people and angel is promised. 24, Moses is called up into the mountain and the glory of God appeared, right? And 25 is offerings for the tabernacle, the form of the Ark of the Testimony. The table and its furniture, the candlestick and its instruments, all of these were very symbolic and prophetic signs with this. Uh, 26, the 10 curtains of the tabernacle, 
the boards of the tabernacle with their sockets and bars, the veil for the ark, 27 is the altar of burnt offering with its vessels, the court of the tabernacle, the oil for the lamp, and uh, 28 is Aaron and his sons are set apart for the priest's office. There's also the ephod, the breastplate with 12 precious stones, the robe of the ephod and the plate of the uh, mirth, and the garments for Aaron's sons. 29 is the ceremonies of consecrating the priest. Thank you, Jesus. The continual burnt offering. 30 is directions for making the altar of incense, the brazen laver, the holy anointing oil. Uh, 31 is Bezalel and the holy of our call for the work of the tabernacle. You see so much creativity and originality with them also and how the Lord, like when you win your gift, you know, um, the observation of the Sabbath is commanded again. 32 is the golden calf. God is anger. Moses comes down with the tablets. Moses prays for the people. And he was an intercessor to you guys. He prayed even when his brother and his sister put their mouth on him and his wife. He still prayed for them people. He prayed it would be times where the Lord's anger was going to burn out against other people and like he would pray for them. So he was an intercessor. You know, that's what I like about him. Moses prays for the people. 33, the Lord refuses to go with the people. The tabernacle is removed out of the camp. Um, Moses desires to see the glory of God. Do you desire to see the glory of the Lord? How hungry are you for him? How thirsty? How desperate? 34, the tablets are renewed. God makes a covenant with his people. Moses returns from the mountain. 35 is the Sabbath, the readiness of the people to make offerings. Bezalel and the holy of our call to the work. Glory to God. 36, the offerings are delivered to the workmen. The curtains of goat's hair. 37 is the ark, the table with its vessels. 38, and it's also the, the veil in um, 36. 38 is the altar of burnt offering in the court. The people's offering. 39 is the cloth of service and holy garments. 40 is the erection of the tabernacle with its anointing is commanded and the cloud covers the tabernacle. In Leviticus, in Genesis, and Deuteronomy talks about different things. We do have a series on those. Like I said, I'm not really going to go over all that today, but just to give you guys some um, biblical context and uh, references for it, you know, um, that is going to conclude um, this teaching and the words of the Lord that he will have me to give you guys for this. You guys have a great day and an awesome sauce um, weekend. I'm going to see y'all back on Monday, Lord's Will, because Saturday and Sunday is um, pretty much my break time with um, YouTube and Instagram and um, like the encouragement and things like that. But I'm keeping you guys in prayer. So I'll see you guys back Monday, Lord's Will. We'll be in week two. God is good. I speak blessings over you guys' life. And um, you guys just be blessed. Thanks so much for tuning in. Love y'all.